Milwaukee just intentionally lost to Cleveland to avoid the Nets in round one, considering Kyrie's been allowed to play home games for the last few weeks and is averaging 29 points per game in April, you can't blame teams for wanting to avoid competing against a flowing Uncle Drew next to the MVP caliber Easy Money Sniper in Kevin Durant. With a top 5 winning percentage and 12-5 record overall since March 8th, this video displays why everyone wants to avoid facing the top-heavy team from Kings County in a 7-game series and the reason the Brooklyn Nets have the NBA nervous entering the 2022 playoffs. Right before that, 90.3% of you watching right now aren't subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. It wasn't the second night of a back-to-back -back for the reigning NBA championship winning Milwaukee Bucks, but they still decided to rest every one of their top players in Giannis, Middleton, Portis, Lopez, and also Drew Holiday, other than a foul that he took so he could gain an extra $250,000 for a contract bonus. While you could argue that the Bucks just wanted to come out of game 82 healthy, entering a run to defend their title, given how if Milwaukee beat Cleveland they would secure the second seed which could potentially line them up with their old foe in Brooklyn, Milwaukee coach Mike Budenholzer obviously was aware of that and not only rested his best players but every valuable contributor. In other words, the Bucks' game 82 loss to the Cavaliers was an obvious tanking effort to avoid the team they nearly went down 3-0 against in last year's second round. Game 3 of last year's Eastern Conference semifinals, with Kyrie healthy and the Nets up 2-0 in the series, saw Milwaukee scrap out an old-school defensive battle, winning 86-83 to make it a 2-1 series lead for Brooklyn. In Game 4, the Bucks were on a 19-2 run in the second quarter, but only up by 4 points after a Kyrie Irving layup, but tragically after that layup, Irving landed on Adetokounmpo's foot in what Nets fans would call a dirty play. I'm not going to give my take on that personally, but I'm interested to hear your thoughts on Kyrie's injury from last year down below in the comments. Given Milwaukee had started to flip the momentum in the series before Kyrie's injury, it's not a foregone conclusion that Brooklyn goes on to close out the Bucks if Irving's injury doesn't happen. Having said that, even without Kyrie and the current 76er James Harden playing on a bad hamstring, Kevin Durant put the team on his back as the Easy Money Sniper averaged over 35 points. If Durant carrying the scoring load and leading the group with his shot manufacturing essentially by himself was good enough to push Milwaukee to not only seven games, but a few shots away from elimination, then who knows how tough the Bucks would have had it if Kyrie doesn't get hurt. But as Irving's displayed in the Bronx, it's not about what's happened in the past, whether it was his playoff injury or the drama he dealt with in being banned from his home arena, it's about how you respond. While Kyrie struggled a bit with his overall field goal percentage this month, he has shot 40% from three-point range, and as you heard in the intro, the Nets point guard has averaged 29 points per game in the month of April. In a bigger sample size, albeit still in just 28 games played throughout 2021-22's campaign, the former NBA champion and All-NBA player has had one of the most productive seasons of his career, displaying after hitting 30 years of age this past March 23rd that his prime is far from behind him. This season, Kyrie's averaged a second personal best mark of 27.2 points per game, making a career high 41.2% of his three-pointers. And what makes that three-point percentage so impressive is the fact that he's also attempting a career high 8.3 triples per game. Irving's one of the greatest showmen not only in today's game but of all time, as the biggest snub from the All-75 team is one of the clutchest players in modern day history, with an iconic handle off the dribble to go along with pristine, polished, yet deadly shooting mechanics. Irving has the ability to break down any matchup or defensive game plan, working in simple isolations and pick and rolls. Kyrie also works tremendously off the ball, but with his elite chops as a shot-creating playmaker, fact of the matter is, Irving doesn't need an advanced playset consisting of pin downs and back cuts to get the job done. Man's capable of shaking off any caliber defender and creating space from practically nothing. There's no top seed who worked all year to get where they are, who wants the first round challenge of stopping all that beastliness from Uncle Drew, in addition to stopping the greatest score of this generation in KD. With a W over the Indiana Pacers on the final day of the 2021-22-82 game grind, 
The Nets clinched the seventh seed in the Eastern Conference and are going to host the Cleveland Cavaliers Tuesday night at Barclays Center. A win, and they face the number two seed in a seven-game battle, a loss to the up-and-coming Cavaliers who've struggled as of late, and then Brooklyn would face the winner of the 9-10 game between the Hawks and Hornets against the rebuilding Pacers, who lost 10 games in a row to help their lottery odds to close out the season. It was a balanced scoring effort as each net starter finished in double figures. Kyrie Irving had a big second half performance as he capped off the night with 35 points on an extremely efficient 15 of 20 shooting from the field and four of six shooting from deep. He also had seven boards, five assists and a steal to go along with three turnovers in 40 minutes of play. That efficiency and all around production displays that playoff Kyrie is rounding into form, which from even a Raptors fan's perspective, whose team isn't matched up with Brooklyn in round one, that scares me personally. Kevin Durant struggled with his shot, going five of 17 from the field and 0 of six from three point range. He also coughed up a team high six turnovers in the win, but on the bright side, KD notched his single season high fourth triple double with 20 points, 10 rebounds, and a career high 16 assists in a team high 41 minutes. Those 16 dimes were also the season high for the Nets, tying James Harden. Bruce Brown had another strong showing, tallying 21 points, seven boards, three dimes, three steals, two blocks, and three turnovers in 38 minutes. Andre Drummond collected his 11th double double in a Nets uniform with 20 points and 13 boards in 20 minutes. The young Kessler Edwards, fresh off putting pen to paper on a standard NBA contract, finished with 10 points in his 23rd start of the year. Coach and former two-time MVP Steve Nash spoke on the victory before the tournament, saying, It's great. The guys got it done. We got up to 7th. We were in 10th a week ago. We had to weather a lot for our guys to get here and earn the opportunity to play for 7th. Today, getting the job done regardless of how, that's all that matters. End quote. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant spoke on the play-in tournament saying, just go play, can't put too much pressure on yourself. You understand how important the play-in game is already. The best thing to do is just play free, stick to the game approach plan, and trust your teammates. That's usually how you win these games. We'll see what happens. In your opinion, can the Nets win the 2022 title? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top five commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this summer. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Jonas, who says the Raptors can struggle against a team that runs a fast-paced offense, such as the Rockets and Sixers, and they started those games off with a terrible deficit. Come playoff time, when the pace slows down, the Raptors will be the more prepared team, not to mention our core five players have only played around 20 games together or so. When the season wraps up, these guys are going to be locked in as a unit. Appreciate every answer. You guys are the best. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.